A laborer working on a roof fell through a skylight opening eight feet to his death. He was impaled on rebar below. Falls are one of the leading cause of injury and death in the workplace. On average, 250,000 workers are injured in falls every year and another 750 will die. In 82% of reported cases, no fall protection was used. Employers must equip workers with fall protection and train them to use it properly. Employees must observe safety rules and use safe work practices to avoid accidents. If both of these conditions are being met, we shouldn't have workplace falls. With so many workers still being injured and killed in workplace falls, where do we look for answers? This presentation puts a focus on personal accountability in workplace safety. Take a few minutes and listen to Russ Youngstrom's story. Russ isn't an actor or a polished speaker. He's an ordinary guy with a wife and family. He's got dreams and hopes and choices just like you do. One day, Russ made a choice that will affect the rest of his life. Hi, my name is Russ Youngstrom. I used to be a commercial painter for about five years. Uh, one morning I woke up, uh, gave my wife a kiss goodbye, uh, jumped in the truck, got my espresso, and went to work. Uh, we went to, we were working in Everett that morning, up at a pulp mill. And first thing uh, we did that morning was have a safety meeting. So first thing I did is I grabbed the clipboard, signed my name, and passed it off to the gentleman next to me. Uh, that morning we had a three-man crew with us and so we our objective was to uh, power wash the outside and once we uh, went up to the top of the building we uh, set up our safety lines and our swing staging it's uh, what window cleaners use it's uh, we had a two-man spider unit that goes up and down the outside of the building and so uh, we had two of us that were in the basket and one person on the ground that was controlling the airlines and our safety lines. And so myself and a good friend of mine, Aaron, started power washing the outside of the building. And somebody got our attention and they let us know it was break time. So we lowered our basket down, uh, hopped out, uh, took a break for about 15, 20 minutes, uh, got back into, into the spider unit, went back up and started power washing. And then uh, about an hour and a half, two hours went by and somebody got our attention again and it was time for lunch. So the weather was terrible, it was really windy, raining. And so during lunch we sat there, had candy bars, uh, took it easy, stayed out of the weather. And so we got ready to go back to work and then we had to have a mandatory safety meeting. And we didn't mind, it was still, uh, the weather was really bad. So we went up, up a flight of stairs and listened to some gentleman talk and again, that clipboard was there. I grabbed the clipboard, signed my name, passed it on. And this gentleman uh, was telling us about fall protection. I, I really didn't pay attention. I did not pay attention. Safety training on its own is rarely enough if the worker doesn't put that safety training and what's learned there into action on a daily basis. Employers are required to provide current and updated training. Employees are required to adhere to those rules and regulations. So why do we still have accidents? Why do we still have these occurrences in the field? Doesn't it boil down to personal accountability? And so after the safety meeting, we went back to work. Uh, Aaron and I got back into our two-man spider unit and started power washing. And once we got down to approximately a 30-foot level uh, to a platform, our spider unit got stuck on some of the handrail. and. Uh, so the best thing for us to do, I thought uh, it was my decision is, let's try to pick the spider unit up. And so uh, we had the person that was on the ground come up to the 30 foot, 30 foot platform next to us. And so he grabbed, grabbed the airline. And so our goal was to pick it up and he was gonna pull it over. And I got ready to go to my side of the spider and my safety line was too short coming from the building. So immediately I just unhooked my lanyard, hooked it back to myself, and I looked and the friend of mine shook his head at me and gave me the look. And I kind of waved him off like, don't worry about it. And then he looked at me again and I said, hey, it's fine. Now here we are, Russ just gets out of a meeting. Two safety meetings, one specifically on fall protection. And right after the meeting, we go up there on the job and he unhooks at height. 
There's never a good excuse for breaking safety rules. The consequences could be severe for you, the company, and everyone around. So we climbed up on the handrail. I got up to the second to the top rail, wrapped my legs around it, and I felt comfortable where I was. When I looked down, I could catch myself on the conduit, the cross beams, that I wouldn't be able to fall straight down. I had quick enough reflexes to catch myself. The amount of force that can be generated by even a small fall, say six feet, is you would have to be extremely strong to catch yourself um, from even a small fall. Uh, some of us think that we can uh, stop ourselves from falling and react fast enough. Uh, uh, when we're younger, our reflexes are better, but as we age, uh, they deteriorate. We do know after the, uh, the age of 30 that our uh, strength in general deteriorates about 10% per decade. So on the count of three, uh, we picked up the spider unit and the gentleman on the ground pulled it with the airline. So he, once he pulled it, it slipped out of his hands and came back and hit me in the chest. And immediately it threw me back about 10 feet. Russ indicated he had had warning signs prior to his incident from a coworker and also internal warning signs, um, his own gut feelings. Workers have to learn to listen to those warning signs, take them as an indicator that something's wrong, stop what they're doing, and plan a safe way. The hard hat flew off, the safety glasses flew off, and I immediately looked to the friend of mine at Aaron and he, immediately we locked eyes. It's like floating, like you're like a feather almost. It was just a slow motion fall. And I'm looking at Aaron and then I can finally see one of my legs coming in front of me. And all of a sudden I just felt a big smack on the back of my head and a huge pop. Just a really strange sound. I tried so hard to get up and walk it off. It was, I gotta walk it off, I gotta get up and I couldn't. And the paramedics came up the stairs and one of them kneeled down and uh, started checking me out. And the uh, first thing he did was starting cutting my clothes off in the safety harness. And he looked at my harness and looked up and asked me, why weren't you tied off? And I, I was too embarrassed and I broke eye contact. They got me on a backboard, transported me to the hospital. And so the first thing they did is put me through an MR, MRI machine. And I came out the other side. And when I came out the other side, there was this doctor right there and she kneeled down, got about an inch from my face and said, you had broken, broken your back in three places and severed your spinal cord and you'll never walk again and left. And I'm laying there by myself thinking, okay, that's nah, that won't happen. Oh, I'll, I can overcome this. Um, it won't happen to me that, you know, I'll be fine in a couple weeks. And uh, so they took me up to a ICU into my little private room and about an hour went by and then my wife came into the hospital room and it was just her and I in there. And uh, so I explained to her that the doctor said that I had broken my back and that I'm paralyzed and I won't, I'll never walk. When Russ first told me he was paralyzed, um, I didn't believe him. He's kind of a jokester and um, I thought he was kidding. And then um, the gentleman that had been with him on the job, who was also a good friend of his, um, told me that he wasn't kidding. You know, I never thought of, for better and for worse when you get married, that I'd put my wife through something like this. If you're a worker taking chances on the job site, there's more to worry about than just yourself. Um, you, need, you need to worry about your family and uh, consider that it might affect them as well, not just yourself. It was, it was just shock and, uh, and I couldn't believe it. Um, I didn't even know what to think. I didn't know what the rest of our life was going to be like. Russ's medical future is problematic. Uh, statistically, he'll probably die uh, at a younger age. Uh, complications that occur after uh, becoming a paraplegic are significant. Uh, there is uh, daily catheterization in order to urinate. Uh, there is uh, problems with uh, control of your bowels. Uh, 
you would have erectile dysfunction, of course, uh, because having to sit for prolonged periods of time, I can, can, can get uh, decubitus ulcers, which are breakdown of the soft tissue that sometimes have to be surgically treated. Uh, he may not be aware of uh, uh, the sensation below his waist, and if he has a, a break in the skin and it becomes infected, he may not know it till he has a full-blown uh, septic uh, infection. Uh, there's a number of things that can occur, so he's really got some medical issues that uh, have to be monitored uh, very carefully. It's been almost 15 years uh, since I fell, and every time I hold up a lanyard and listen to this click, that's one of the last things I did is click this back to myself. If I would have used this wrapped around a handrail to the spider unit, to something, this would have kept me from falling 30 feet. And I wish I would have used this properly.